Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Kadebia Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. During the meeting, the Royal Highnesses affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, has overcome many challenges, adding that due to the wisdom of His Majesty and the determination of the government and the people, the Kingdom is able to move forward with its development march. They expressed pleasure with the Kingdom's development in the various fields and its advanced position on the Arab and international levels, which was reflected by international indicators. The Royal Highnesses highlighted the economic activity in the region and the importance of global security and economic forums hosted by Bahrain and its brotherly countries, as they represent an opportunity to exchange views on security, economic and political issues and identify investment opportunities. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today the Cabinet meeting in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed good wishes to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince on his birthday, wishing him abundant health and happiness. The Cabinet was briefed in Bahrain's delegation, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, that will participate in the Future Investment Initiative, the FII, which will be held in Saudi Arabia, under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, and headed by the Saudi Crown Prince, First Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Cabinet hailed the holding of the conference, highlighting its importance during the economic and technological developments in the world and the region's government's keenness on maintaining its competency in the new economic era. It also commended the initiative of the Saudi leadership on organising the conference. The Cabinet praised the decisions of the custodian of the two holy mosques on the case of the Saudi citizen Jamal Khashoggi and its wise approach it embodies that is based on establishing truth and the values of justice. The Cabinet lauded the successful steps and decisions that the custodian of the two holy mosques made in holding the delinquents accountable and addressing any negligence or mistakes. His Royal Highness discussed with the attendees the effects of the recent rainfall in some areas, instructing the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning to take prompt action to address the areas with the most damage to prevent the accumulation of rainwater in these areas in the future. The Cabinet was briefed on the precautionary measures taken by the Ministry during the rain season. The Cabinet approved a number of procedures that aim to regulate fisheries, reduce fishing effort in the marine environment and develop marine resources through a number of procedures and executive decisions to prevent the deterioration of fish stocks and appointed the concerned Minister to take the necessary procedures. 
The Cabinet also approved expanding in the field of fish farming and encouraging investment in it as an economic and food resource. The meeting approved listing a number of individuals and entities to Bahrain's terrorism list and appointed the regulatory authorities to take the necessary measures. The Cabinet reviewed the preparations for hosting the fifth edition of the Bahrain International Air Show, which will be held from November the 14th to the 16th. It directed all governmental bodies and agencies to provide support and contribution to the success of the show. The Cabinet reviewed the latest developments in the global economy, the results of the meetings of the Development Committee, the meeting of the Monetary and Financial Committee and the Human Capital Index, issued by the World Bank, in which Bahrain was ranked first in the Arab region and ranked 47 internationally out of 157 countries. The meeting approved the rules of procedure for the Capital Secretariat Council and the draft resolution for its issuance. The Cabinet approved a protocol between the Bahraini government and the Russian government to amend and update some provisions of the air transport agreement signed between the two countries in 1994. It discussed a memorandum of understanding for economic, technical and investment cooperation between Bahrain and Egypt and referred it to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet referred to the Representatives Council a draft law amending Article 35 of Decree Law 36 of 2006 regarding the organisation of tenders, auctions, governmental procurement and sales. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa announced holding the Government Forum 2018 under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa on Sunday the 28th of the current month. The meeting comes with the participation of all bodies of the public sector in light of the comprehensive development process of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to further develop the country and it deals with the steps and policies of various government sectors. It is also characterised by putting forward serious solutions for all development paths. The Court of the Crown Prince today announced that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, will lead Bahrain's high-level delegation, participating at the 2018 Future Investment Initiative, the FII, which is set to take place between the 23rd and 25th of October in Riyadh. This follows an official invitation by the Saudi Crown Prince, Chairman of the Council for Economic and Development Affairs and Chairman of the Public Investment Fund, the PIF, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's participation builds on the long history of strong partnership between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia which is underpinned by a joint commitment to driving innovation and growth across the region. The 2018 FII, which will be held under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the chairmanship of His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, offers a unique platform to identify mutually beneficial investment opportunities to secure regional growth and align development priorities. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Dr Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Al Sheikh at Qadabiya Palace. The Ambassador delivered a letter from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud inviting His Royal Highness to the 2018 Future Investment Initiative, the FII, taking place between the 23rd and 25th of October in Riyadh. His Royal Highness and the Ambassador discussed Bahrain-Saudi long-standing and diverse bilateral relations, which is built on a joint commitment by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, to advance shared strategic interests. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's commitment to working with Saudi Arabia to advance cooperation across all areas. The Crown Prince underscored that the long history of Bahrain-Saudi close collaboration represents the benchmark for how partnerships can drive innovation and shared growth. His Royal Highness concluded by expressing his gratitude for receiving His Royal Highness Prince, Hamid, Prince Mohammed bin Salman's invitation to the 2018 FII, adding that he was delighted to lead Bahrain's high-level delegation to participate at the event, which offers a unique platform to discuss collaboration opportunities that will help secure mutually beneficial growth across the region. 
The ambassador expressed his pleasure at the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and highlighted His Royal Highness's valuable contribution to building on Bahrain-Saudi partnership. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, extended sincere gratitude to His Majesty the King for supporting Bahraini citizens in all fields, especially in the field of education and health. His Highness pointed out that the successful experience of the organisation is the best evidence of the success of His Majesty the King's charitable efforts, which he founded in 2001 represented by the Royal Charity Organisation and expressed pride for the good relationship between Bahrain and Italy at all levels. The Secretary General of the Royal Charity Organisation, Dr Mustafa El Said, received an Italian delegation led by Professor Anatella Volco of the University of Rome and is an accompanying delegation who extended thanks to His Majesty the King for presenting a chair in human science at La Sapienza Rome University. Asayed briefed the delegation on the humanitarian and relief experience of the Royal Charity Organisation. For their part, the delegation praised the efforts of His Majesty the King and the humanitarian relief and his initiatives in the field of tolerance and world peace and the allocation of a chair for human sciences at the University of Rome. The President of the University of Bahrain, Dr Riyad Hamza, received the delegation from La Sapienza University and discusses reinforcing joint cooperation in the framework of student exchange and research and joint scientific programmes. Dr Riyad affirmed the importance of the King Hamad Chair for peaceful coexistence at La Sapienza University. The university has signed an MOU with La Sapienza University to launch exchange student programmes. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the fifth week competitions of the Cup of the First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa concluded, which come as part of the Nasser bin Hamad Marine Heritage Season competitions organised by the Traditional Sports Heritage Committee. His Highness Sheikh Nasser hailed the wide participation of Bahraini youth, affirming that the participation resulted in the remarkable performances of the participants, which contributed to the success of the competitions. His Highness Sheikh Nasser directed the Supreme Organising Committee to prepare for the season's final competitions, which will be held for His Highness's Cup on the 26th and 27th of the current month. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Khalid commended the performances of the competitors which contributed to promoting the sports heritage event, congratulating the winners and wishing the other participants better luck in the final week. His Highness praised the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in supporting heritage sports to promote them in the community and encourage the Bahraini youth to practice them, expressing appreciation to the organising committee for preparing this successful competition. The Minister of Education and Chairman of the Higher Education Council, Dr Majid Andawemi, patronised the inauguration ceremony of the British University in Bahrain, in SAR, in the presence of the Ambassador of the United Kingdom to Bahrain, Simon Martin, and Professor President of the University of Salford, Manchester, Helen Marshall, and other officials. The Minister of Education congratulated them for the opening of the British University in Bahrain and said that the inauguration of the University of Salford in Bahrain is a qualitative addition to the higher education sector, locally and regionally. He said that the Higher Education Council is keen to encourage investment in this vital sector and attract prestigious international universities to provide distinguished academic programmes that meet the needs of the labour market and the requirements of the comprehensive and sustainable development. He noted that as Bahrain is preparing for the 100th anniversary of the start of formal education, the Kingdom has made great strides in the development of education at all levels, including higher education, which witnessed a qualitative leap in the era of His Majesty the King. The Minister of Education toured the university headquarters and its laboratories, which are equipped with the latest digital educational techniques, which will serve students in various academic programmes in the faculties of Information and Communication Technology engineering and business administration. The university offers an internationally recognised degree. 
The Minister of Health, Fayeka bin Saeed Al Saleh, chaired the meeting of the work group on operating expenses, which is entrusted with medical resources, where they discussed a number of topics on the meeting's agenda. Al Saleh affirmed that these initiatives, which were created to enhance the efficiency of government expenditure and contribute to the sustainability and stability of financial conditions, continue to promote the pace of development for the benefit of the country and the citizens. She also noted that the outcomes of the team's work would have a significant impact on the success of the fiscal balance programme aimed at balancing expenditure and government revenues by 2022. The supervisory committees of the 2018 elections in the four governorates of the Kingdom yesterday stopped receiving candidacy requests for parliamentary and municipal elections. The stage of presenting lists of candidates and receiving requests for correction and objections to candidates will begin tomorrow and will continue for three days, ending on the 24th of October. As for the organisation of the candidates' advertisements, it was announced that the candidate has the right to start booking the advertisement sites and the electoral tents starting from the 22nd of October after the announcement of the candidates' lists and after obtaining the necessary approvals from the concerned authorities. 506 candidates have applied for parliamentary and municipal elections, 160 of which have applied for municipal council and 346 for the representatives council. The southern government received 114 applicants, the northern government received 200 applications, Maharak government received 105 applicants and the capital government with 87 applications. The second phase of the joint exercise at Bridge 19, carried out by the Bahrain Defence Force, represented by the Bahraini Royal Navy with the Eastern Fleet of the Royal Navy in Saudi Arabia, began yesterday and continues until Thursday. The exercise includes the participation of a number of warships and support boats, landing ships, helicopters and a number of combat groups to carry out practical and tactical manoeuvres in the territorial waters of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The aim of the exercise is to enhance joint coordination and achieving the required integration in the field of joint maritime operations. تمرين جسا تعبير حي وصادق يعكس المصير والهدف المشترك بين المملكتين الشقيقتين ويأتي ضمن أطر التعاون بين سلاح البحرية الملكي البحريني والقوات البحرية الملكية السعودية من خلال تنفيذ عدد من التمارين من ضمنها توحيد المفاهيم والتمارين التكتيكية بالإضافة إلى تبادل الخبرات والتدريب على أحدث الأنظمة والأسلحة للوصول إلى التكامل على الصعيد العسكري وهذا هو الهدف المرجو من التمرين تمرين جسر 19 اللي هو التمرين البحري الثنائي المشترك بين القوات البحرية الملكية السعودية وسلاح البحرية الملكي البحريني حقيقة نحن وصلنا إلى النسخة التاسعة عشر وصلنا إلى مستوى عالي جدا من التناسق والتناغم في العمليات البحرية بالإضافة إلى توحيد المفاهيم وتعزيز القدرات القتالية للوصول إلى الأداء الاحترافي بين البحريتين الشقيقتين ولا ننسى كرم الضيافة اللي غمرتنا بها قيادة سلاح البحرية الملكي البحريني حقيقة إخوان وأكثر من إخوان نشترك في هذا التمرين لأداء العمليات البحرية وتعزيز التعاون للوصول إلى الأداء الاحترافي بين البحريتين The Joint Air Exercise, codenamed Initial Link 2018, carried out by the Bahrain Defence Force, represented by the Royal Air Force, and the participation of nine brotherly and friendly countries continued today for the second day by carrying out a number of advanced tactical air applications in the field of joint air defence operations. The exercise reflected the high and advanced level of the training, as well as the full readiness of the RAF for all duties. 
The exercise is one of the most important exercises carried out by the Royal Air Force of Bahrain for its role in raising the level of military efficiency and enhancing the combat readiness by exchanging expertise and skills in all areas of combat operations and logistical support. يعتبر تمرين الربط الأساسي من أهم التمارين التي يجريها سلاح الجو الملك البحرين وهي تحظى اهتمام بالغ من لدن سيدي جلالة الملك والقائد العام العمل على التعاون المتواصل في تطوير القدرات القتالية وتدريب الضباط على القيادة والسيطرة التجهيز لمثل هذه التمارين يحتاج إعداد مسبق يصل إلى سنة قبل بدء التمرين من إعداد وتجهيز ووضع السيناريوهات وغيرها اليوم تمرين 2018 يعتبر من التمارين ذات أهمية خاصة وذلك لمرور 30 عام منذ إنشاء التمرين تشترك فيه تسع دول وتشارك فيه ما 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 يزيد عن 30 طائرة عسكرية ذات قدرات قتالية حديثة نحرص في سلاح الجو الملكي الأردنية على المشاركة في تمرين الرابط الأساسي لما له من فائدة على تطوير العمل المشترك بين أسلحتنا الجوية كما يعتبر التمرين الرابط الأساسي إنش اللينك من التمرين الجوية المميزة من حيث الإدارة وطبيعة المعاضر الجوية التي تتعامل معها هذا التمرين يعزز التعاون العمليات المشترك من خلال المشاركة في التخطيط وتنفيذ واستخلاص الدروس المستفادة حتى تتمكن أسلحتنا الجوية بتنفيذ الواجبات المطلوبة منها بكل فعالية واحتراف نتقدم بالشكر والجزيل إلى إدارة هذا التمرين والقيادات العسكرية البحرينية ونهنئ جلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة حفظه الله على المستوى الرفيع الذي تتمتع به قوة دفاع البحرين the opening of the Bahrain Across Borders exhibition, Art Bab, for a number of Bahraini artists at the Contemporary Museum in Singapore witnessed wide participation by the audience, who expressed admiration for the development of Bahraini art, which reflects Bahrain's interest in the artistic movement of the early 50s. For her part, the Director General of the Office of the Wife of His Majesty the King, Sheikh Maram bin Isa Al Khalifa, thanked Her Royal Highness, the Wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Abika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, for her continuous support to Bahraini artists. Sheikh Maram expressed pleasure with the praise of the participating artists received, stressing that the transfer of such experiences abroad will contribute to the promotion of Bahrain as a cultural destination. Organised by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs, the first International Global Youth Festival for Sustainable Development Goals, Youthful Festival 2018, kicked off yesterday with a lot of activities until the 25th of October. An attempt to break a Guinness record with the world's largest lesson aims to introduce children and young people everywhere to the Sustainable Development Goals and unite them in action, make students aware about the role towards achieving their global goals and emphasise on the importance of youth participation in global affairs. The Global Goals aim to eliminate extreme poverty, to reduce inequalities and to combat the threat of climate change by 2030. The record targets students aged 13 to 29 in 40 of Bahrain's universities and schools, with the participation of more than 12,000 students in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and ISAC organisation to educate young people and raise awareness about the Sustainable Development Goals and highlight their role towards achieving these goals. Um, today we're delivering this lesson in around 40 schools and universities across the Kingdom of Bahrain with the participation of around 12,000 students and 300 trainers. We believe that youth has the key to unlock this better future and if we made the youth aware about these problems and these issues that are happening around the world and we educated them about the sustainable development goals, we will make sure that the youth, the youth will be responsible enough to take initiatives to solve these problems around the world and in Bahrain of course. We want to create a certain type of uh, move or push 
that is led by young people towards sustainable development and putting the SDGs at the core of a lot of things that they do and small day-to-day -day actions all the way to the businesses that they want to build for the future. Um, and this is kind of like what we were pushing for today with the, with the world's largest lesson, where we have more than 50, 15,000 students from more than 50 schools all over Bahrain that are contributing, 250 volunteers from ISEC from all around the world, from 56 countries, and 250 Bahraini volunteers that are teaching the kids on the ground from in high school and universities the sustainable development goals. What do they mean? And what are small, simple actions that they can commit to? I'm Chatham Bahrain in collaboration with the Capital Governorate and the US Embassy held an innovation in tourism, building the tourism sector for the Sevi Traveller Business Networking Luncheon today, with the CEO of BTEA, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, was a keynote speaker. More in this report by Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Latest developments and innovations in the local and regional tourism sectors were discussed today in the business networking luncheon organized by Amcham Bahrain. In collaboration with the Capital Governorate and the U.S. Embassy to unlock new investment opportunities, beneficial partnerships and fruitful collaborations. We're here uh, today to talk about the uh, revolution in the uh, travel industry, the tourism industry and uh, what are the developments as far as uh, the technology is involved, how it is evolving and how it is changing the whole uh, perspective of the uh, traveler, the choices it is giving them uh, and, and, and where it's going. We are involved in supporting the uh, America Week and as well as the, uh, the Innovation Week. So both of them are very important to us and both of them are interlinked because uh, uh, as uh, the American Chamber of Commerce, we are there to support the, the local activities as well as international activities between the U.S. and Bahrain. The luncheon is a great initiative to highlight cooperation between Bahrain and the United States in commerce, tourism and many levels. It served as a great platform gathering tourism professionals from public and private sectors to actively discuss the latest in the field and further discuss plans and means of collaboration. Really, tourism is about people, and it's about people visiting and learning about other cultures and societies. And this is where I think is one of the strongest aspects of our relationship with Bahrain. The many Bahrainis who travel to the United States and the many Americans who travel to Bahrain on an annual basis. We think, uh, we have the, the figures we have are 50,000 Americans travel to Bahrain every year. Uh, we have many thousands of Bahrainis who also travel to the United States on a regular basis. We have about 11,000 uh, um, individuals who come to our embassy every year for visas from Bahrain, Bahrainis and then residents of Bahrain. Chief Executive Officer of BTEA, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa, was the keynote speaker where he discussed the kingdom's latest statistics, achievements and future plans of the BTEA which will contribute to the advancement and progress of the local economy and tourism sector. I was delighted for the opportunity to explore Bahrain for the very first time. And of course, I am super grateful uh, because everyone has made it feel like home. I think you are a gem and a best kept secret in this region. And I can't wait to go back to the United States and tell everybody that if anyone is thinking about doing business in the Middle East, they have to come here because you are at the epicenter of growth and innovation and entrepreneurship. Constant discussions, exchange of ideas, experiences and suggestions are great means to develop and enhance the tourism sector which contributes to the achievement of the Kingdom's Economic Vision 2030. As part of the Manama Entrepreneurship Week, the AmTime highlights today the great partnership between Bahrain and the U.S., gathering tourism experts to discuss today building the tourism sector and innovation in tourism. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheb Abdul Ghafoor. The Ministry of Health celebrated World Mental Health Day in accordance with the World Health Organization, which is held this year under the slogan Youth and Mental Health in a Changing World. The World Mental Health Day is celebrated annually by uh, the World Health Organization and the World Psychiatric Association. And every year there is a special team. The team this year is about youth uh, with the age group between 15 and 29 as it is acknowledged that it is a very important part of life. Uh, general recommendation of the WHO is you know, early detection 
and the prevention of psychiatric and psychological problem in this important age group. Our theme for this year is young people and uh, the mental health, uh, which we are focusing on uh, the internet uh, and mostly new new approaches to mental health, because uh, nowadays we have new stressors such as internet bullying, uh, such as different uh, disconnecting from the real world and more addiction to the internet and the social media itself. So there are multiple new stressors for the mentally applicable or the mentally uh, ill that would stress them or uh, trigger their psychological illness. With the 2018 parliamentary and municipal elections approaching, it is important to bear in mind the significance of taking part in the election process and practicing the democratic rights provided to the citizens by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Election is cementing that relation from a constitutional uh, legal aspect where people, knowledgeable people from the community are given the honor to participation, to participate in decision making in important issues that affect our future and the future of our young people. So it is so important to participate because of the benefits, but also to endorse His Majesty the King's initiatives to advance Bahrain to a, a higher platform. I encourage all the Bahrainis, all the voters, whom they can vote, to participate in their duty, to participate in their rights. This is their rights. This is their duty. I think Bahrain needs them at this moment. Let us see how you are actually, you know, um, coming forwards and participating your duty to serve Bahrain. You are now empowered to give your voice to have a representative under the Dome of Parliament um, and please vote. Uh, do not listen to voices that tell you to boycott elections. After all, you need to vote, you need to give your voice to democracy and uh, just go out there and vote.